Hey, welcome back to Gold Scratch. So, ran across something interesting. We got a special guest. Nolan is here from Atchison Machine. He's kind enough to come all the way over here to help us do this. We ran across something today uh, at Atchison's. Had Alec with me, and the standard question Alec always says: We run across something. Does everybody know that? If not, let's make a video. So, we ran across something that uh, was kind of new to me. So let's give you a little bit of background. So over the last 10 years or so, Atchison's has machined dozens of blocks for me. I've never ever taken anything back. I've never re needed to. Nolan does this awesome work for me. It's always accurate and on spec. So in this case, this is our uh, Raiders 454 block. And I <clears throat> had him bore it. Uh, and picked it up and but when we had it when I brought it there we didn't have a piston so that's worth noting so I got it back here and so the standard uh, clearance for a big block chev in the GM manual 037 to 0042 or 43 in that range and it was but the pistons the Y school piston spec said uh, four and a half to five thou so uh, we were in the GM spec, but not that one. So I actually took the block back. I said, guys, I want you to uh, look at this for me and see whether we need to take more clearance out now. So we went to pick it up today, and Nolan enlightened me with some of the issues related to the fact that, and most of the time we get our blocks uh, bored and honed with a plate. And so I'm going to turn it over to you, Nolan. You can explain what uh, that you told us today that we didn't know before. So, so essentially, um, uh, what we came across today was uh, distortion, uh, particularly bore distortion uh, closer to the top side. And what happened was, uh, since I finished honed the block with a torque plate, um, when it's torqued up, it's round. Uh, when you pull the plate off, you get distortion. Uh, so that'll affect kind of the measurements you get when you're checking the bores. And um, essentially, Alan uh, thought it was coming up a little bit tight. Uh, but what happened was when you pulled the plate off and uh, the block's not torqued, the bores would compress uh, this way, but would grow this way. Um, so that would affect your overall measurement uh, kind of down the line. Um, uh, yeah. So you mentioned, yeah. Nolan, typically when I measure a bore, dial bore gauge, I measure it north and south, basically, 90 degrees to the pin. And what you brought up today is you measure it in two places, right? Yep. And with the torque plate, and that's where the difference came, really, in, in, in getting the final bore, right? So. Yeah, you can, and, and generally, uh, if you split the difference between the two measurements, um, you'll be very close to your final clearance anyways. Um, so, yeah. So, if you take the clearance when the torque plate's on it, that's what you're going to have when the head's on it. That's the whole idea. Absolutely. Of it. Yeah, that's the whole absolutely. idea of a torque plate. Now, when I come back here, I can't do that, right? I don't have a torque plate here. So, I'm measuring it without that and saying, hey, this thing's a little bit tight. I'm nervous. Uh, it's actually, these pistons are 2618 aluminum Weisco pistons. They actually uh, grow a little more than, than some of the other metallurgies. So, you know, even though it wasn't bad, it's got to be right. And that's why I took it back to Nolan. And basically, he basically took me to school on that subject because I usually take it there, bring it back, measure it, put it together. And that's all I have to do. But in this case, you know, what you're telling me is, when I get the head torqued on, it's going to be the same as when you're measuring with the torque plate on it. And you have enough clearance when you're measuring with the torque plate on it, right? Absolutely. Um, right and bar, and so. uh, regardless, you'll you'll have enough clearance uh, either way. It just it, it looks a lot different and understandably so. You were a little bit apprehensive um, because the some of these bores, particularly the ones that don't have the upper bolt holes, would distort up to a thou and a half with the plate off. Um, that definitely doesn't look very good uh, when you're checking everything and getting ready sure. to kind of put things together, right? The other difference is the GM spec for a forged piston, once again, uh, 0037, 0042, or 43, 
the spec that Wisecoal wants with those pistons is four and a half to five. That was the other reason that I felt, hey man, I'm off here. I thought I was off by about a thou. Now, no one fix it for me. We're good to go now and a little smarter too, thanks to, uh, <laughs> there's the piston right there, so. The interesting thing with these two, and it's quite common with a lot of performance pistons is you'll actually have to adjust the nominal bore size to the piston. So this piston mic'd at 4276, which if you were to take the block to the nominal size 4280, you'd only end up with 4000 anyways. Um, so that's that's another thing to consider as well. That's what uh, I was finding always, too. Yeah, every, yeah, every piston is relative to the block and vice versa. So ideally you always want to have a piston in hand um, when you're going to go finish a block. And uh, temperature of both um, or all components uh, is very uh, relevant as well when taking measurements. So Nolan asked me, How, what's the temperature when you took your clearances? I said, 65. You said, that's too cold. It's got, it's got to be <laughs> 70, right? And the piston and the board have got to be the same temperature. That's the other thing. You actually heat the blocks up a little bit, right? You put them yeah, we, uh, we just try and keep them sort of warm. So around, around 70, like shop temperature 68. Um, we try and keep them around 70. Just, just that's, that's your sort of ambient temperature. Okay. Um, and, and little is this difference. Pro prominent with just Chevys or? Uh, I find distortion uh, seems to show up most with the big block Chevs, um, small blocks as well, Fords and uh, any other engines that have the even space head bolt holes that are quite a ways away from the bores and are also blind holes with a thick deck uh, don't don't tend to see it as much because I've done it both ways. And really, I mean, if you were in a pinch, you could get away with honing, say, a, a 302 Ford or something along that line uh, without a plate and not experience a lot of distortion. So, but for a big block, you should do it with a plate anyway. Absolutely, we always do all anyway. the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's our that's my recommendation. Pretty much our standard. I've had a few engines they don't have plates for, but for a big block or small block Chev, usually we do it with a plate, right? So and. Uh, you look at like a 400 small block uh, where the bores, you know, pretty close to maxed out compared to the location of so the, the walls are pretty holes. thin already, right? Yeah, uh, it, it's really crucial um, at that point that you have you have some sort of uh, simulated torque Good. up top. So. Okay, anything else, Lon? I think that that just about covers the the basics there. So thank you very much for taking time to educate us when we were at the shop early today. And like I said, Alex said, you know, does everybody know that? Let's make a video. So hope you found that interesting. You know, that's really our mission here is to share knowledge and experience. Even if we just gained that knowledge and experience a couple hours ago, uh, we're going to share it anyways. And <clears throat> if you didn't know that already, hopefully it's helpful. Thank you for watching Gold's Grudge. Thanks for coming, Owen. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Yeah.